begin as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to offer to Almighty God our morning sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Father's forgiveness, for us full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, 
The wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
Jesus says to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, in today's second reading, the central aspect of that reading is we all owe a debt of love. We owe a great debt. And if we're not paying our debts, then we must be reneging on our debts. There is no instrument that man can devise that best embodies and communicates this debt of love that is owed than the cross, which is the symbol and standard of our faith. And I would like to place today's debt of love in the injunctions that we received last week. One of those injunctions, of course, came from Jesus Christ who reminds us that we must take up our cross and it must be carried. This debt of love, it must be paid, it must be carried. And in the same breath, he lays out for us one of the greatest burden on that cross that we must bear. We must first lose ourselves and then we will find it. And if we're to pay this debt of love, we must lose ourselves. We must deny it and we will find it. The world is ablaze today, not with love, but rather with hate, resentment, and bitterness. And rather than loving our neighbors, we're busy consuming them like beasts. We're busy fighting this war ideologically, philosophically. People must yield to our particular views. Our neighbors must. They must yield, and if they do not yield, we demonize them, we ostracize them, we consume them, their persons, their good name, their self-respect. It must be taken from them because we're fighting this war, not of love, but rather one of hate, one of resentment and bitterness. And as Christ would lay out last week, that's not the most important battle because that battle is futile. If we're busy consuming one another, then reason says when it's all over, only one person will be left standing. We'll destroy each other and only one will be left. But Jesus reminds us, as Catholics, this is not what we're about. We're not about an ideological war, a philosophical war. We're about the redemption of humanity. And that war is not fight. We do not fight that war with the same instruments as the world does. Our instrument, what has powered us and capacitated us to do, is fight this battle but one with love and we must fight this battle. The most important battle to fight is not without, 
the most important battle that we have to fight is from within. We must fight against the sin of arrogance, the sin of pride, of vanity, of selfishness, the sin of presumption. We must fight that war and it begins within. It's the most important battle we must fight. I must say to my most grieve, my grievous heart, that in this battle, the church has become a casualty. Because many of us as Catholics believe that in this ideological war, the church is the enemy and it too must be fought. But this battle is also futile because two weeks ago, Christ on the confession of St. Peter reminds us that nothing will prevail against it. It will stand. And anyone who knows the history of the church, we've been through many wars and we're still standing. And this will be no different. What is this battle we're called to fight? This battle we're called upon, this battle of love. And we must fight this battle. What is this basis? There is no one who understands the nature of debts as Americans do. We live our lives by them. There's a time when cash was king, but now it's the plastic. It's how we live our lives. And no nation understands the importance of obligations. That debt incurred must be paid. There is a legal, unjust and righteous obligation to pay the debts we incur. And as Catholics, we owe a great debt to God. We owe a great debt of love to Him. And that love, He reminds us, we show that love by lavishing the love that is due Him, lavish on one another. It must overflow. It must diffuse itself. It's what we're called to do as Catholics. Our war is not with God. Our war is not with this church. Our war is with ourselves. It's the greatest obstacle to our own prosperity, our own peace and contentment, our very selves. And thus Jesus says, Deny yourself, lose yourself, and you will find it. Among that injunction, Christ, in the second reading last week, St. Paul lays it out. We must be transformed by the renewal of our minds. Not by conforming to the ways of the world, but we must be transformed by truth as God reveals it. In the world today, what offends in the world today is truth. Truth does not offend. It must be said with kindness, but truth does not offend. What offends, sin offends. Sin offends. It does evil to its neighbor. It does evil to God. And therefore, truth as Catholics, we're called to stand fast and firm in it. And when we proclaim it, and proclaim it we should, it must be with kindness. It must be with love. It does not offend. The second thing that we must grasp, if sin offends, then we are an offending people. And God is an offended God. And he's offended. He's offended because we bear his name. And the goodness of our name may not matter to us, but the goodness of his name matters to him. And he's offended. But the great beauty of God, 
lays out in today's gospel, where Jesus will lay out to us the road to peace and reconciliation. In our responsorial psalm today, the psalmist summarized God's experience with his people. And there was one of those moments where God and the people of Israel in the desert, they drove him to the point where he says, I will consume them. And Moses withstood him in the breach, remind him, this is your people. Show them your greatness. Show them your mercy. And it is that very reality that we live today as Catholics. In the, today's gospel, the great beauty of God, when he asks us to do something, he leads by example. It's what sets him apart from every other human teacher. He leads by example. And an offended God though he is, he says, I will not wait for them to come to me. I will go to them. We, the offending people, he came. We'll hear it four months from today. On the night of Christmas, the angelic host will proclaim peace. He comes in peace, suing for peace. People of goodwill. I'm asking and suing for peace. And as his priest, our responsibility as he lays out in today's gospel, I will lay before you my case as to why I'm offended. Your case as to why you are offending me. And I'm being offended. And my priest is to lay before you my case. It is a just case a righteous case and a good case that we are offending him and hence today's first reading declare to them their sins before me and we are an offending people we're offending God and he's offended and his case is a righteous case a just case and a reasonable case our job as priest is not to appeal to emotions. God appeals and appeals to every man in his conscience, the privacy of his conscience. And each time we hear his word, he asks, I'm appealing to you. I am offended. The great beauty of God, when he asks us to do something, he give us the means and grace by which it is done. And having come to us to make his case, and his case is clear and just, we must respond. And in the sacrament of reconciliation, he gives us as Catholics the means by which we can respond. Once his case is made known, he gives us a place where you and I can go. We can give witness to him of our repentance. I've heard your case. It is a just case. It is a righteous case. And I am responding. And right in that sacrament, I will show you and bear witness. I acknowledge my fault in that very sacrament. I will express my sorrow in that sacrament. I ask for your pardon in that sacrament. As a just people, I'll do my reparations. I'll do my penance because I know that I'm wrong. I've offended and therefore I'm here to make amends. Our great privilege as Catholics we do not presume in God's mercy. He reminds us in sacred scripture, do not presume on my mercy. But I great privilege as Catholics, we don't have to presume. What he does in today's readings, he reminds us that his church, 
which he built on the faith of St. Peter two weeks ago, he has granted it the power of absolution. Loose them, declare them loose, and I will loose them. Declare them bound, and I will bound them. Because in this house, his house, he's provided the means by which we as Catholics can pay our debts. We owe God a debt. We owe a neighbor a debt. And our debts must be paid. Because as Christ will remind us in the parable, no man will be released until he pays every penny. Every cent must be made. We're Catholics. We're just people. We pay our debts. And we owe a debt of love. We owe debts of gratitude. And we pay them. It's what we do. And in so doing, we live up to the goodness and justness of our name. Christ, our justice. Christ, our righteousness. That is owed. He demands his payment. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has been our refuge in every age, and so we pray for all those who are in need. For church leaders and all who are called to lives of service in imitation of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For children who can no longer attend school, that with the help of family, they establish routines that will continue their learning and that this will be a positive time of growth for them, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For all who have suffered loss from acts of violence and for a world free from terror and war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, may they receive the reward of their goodness. And let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Martin Dolphin. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. God of love, help us to heed the voices of those in need. Gather us all together and hold us in your love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
hearts and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who gives us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them together again to yourself, that a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest to the world as the church. And so in company the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. to all things and make them holy, and do never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death we will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Saint Margaret, our patron saint, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all.
Let us pray. O Lord, grant that your faithful, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Of announcements. <clears throat> Next weekend, we'll welcome Father Alfonso Kim from the Maranol Missions. Father Kim will speak at all the Masses on behalf of the propagation of the faith. Next weekend, we will be, there will be a second basket by the doors of the church to receive your collection on behalf of the Holy Land Shrines. This collection is normally taken up on Good Friday each year. However, due to the pandemic, the collection is next weekend. The offices are closed tomorrow, Labor Day. The Rosa will pray tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Sir Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking one of souls. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another. Thanks be to God.